and welcome to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys. A Barcelona news roundup coming up for you today and we do have a lot of news to discuss in today's video. So get yourself ready for this one. We're going to be talking about some encouraging news surrounding Ter Stegen's future. We're going to be talking about today's training session and in particular what Kike Setien is bringing to these training sessions along with an in-depth look into the squad as a whole and in particular the players that Barcelona will need to sell and why they need to sell them this coming summer, along with another twist in the Lataro Martinez deal. Like I say, plenty to discuss. There's not a moment to lose. Let's get to it. But if we do start, as always, with that morning training session, because this morning at 9.30 a.m., the players and the squad there returned to training following their day off on Thursday. They spent that there away from the training ground, a day off after three successive training sessions to start the week. But they were back in today. And it's said that for now, basically with Barcelona and the entirety there of La Liga, the plan is to continue with this phase three, those groups there of 10 players, into next week. So that's going to continue into next week. But, La Liga are going to announce soon a date where full training can resume. So we're going to be keeping a very, very close eye out for that date because it'll be great, won't it, when we can see there that full training back, when Kike Setien there can really start to ramp up our preparation. But what I would like to say though, actually, with regard to these training sessions, we've seen, of course, a lot of pictures from them. We've seen there as well online some videos from those sessions. And what I would like to say is, it seems to me, and I think many of us, there's much more variety in those sessions because I think certainly under Setien, We've undoubtedly seen the team training a lot more frequently. We have seen more and more sessions than we would have done under Valverde. But it's not only that there. We've seen different type of drills. We've seen different equipment used. We've seen players there doing different things that we've never seen before. Of course, we've still got the traditional rondos. You've still got different things that you see all the time. But there's also new stuff as well, which I think is really important. Because I think there, most importantly, you want the hard work. You want the players there coming into training and giving everything. But also, they seem to be having fun which is really, really important. Setien himself will join in. We've seen him taking free kicks. We've seen him taking part there in the rondos. And I think that's creating a really good environment because in general, to get the best out of a squad, especially like this one, you need them to work hard. You need them there to come into training every single day and give it maximum intensity. But what you also need from them is for them to enjoy it because you know full well if you're coming into work, which is what it is for the players, even though it seems hard to believe, if you're coming there into work every day with a smile on your face, enjoying yourself, you'll want to be there. You'll want to be there and not only that, but you'll want to give everything then on the pitch for your coach. But if we move to transfers, starting here with this potential twist to the Lataro Martinez deal, because rumours over the past few days coming from Argentina were basically saying that a deal was moving closer and closer and closer. There was real optimism there that in those Argentine reports that Barcelona were very, very close to getting their man in Lataro Martinez. But I just want to say on that, the feeling from Spain right now is those reports there are a little bit premature. They feel as though right now any deal between Barcelona and Inter Milan for Lataro Martinez is still quite some distance away with a number of obstacles apparently still in the way of that deal getting done because we spoke before about Dries Mertens deciding against a move to Inter. He's now going to be staying at Napoli which is a replacement there for Lataro. They're not going to be getting now and I also want to bring you another potential deal that could also be detrimental to our pursuit for the striker because reports this morning have come out and very very reliable reports too from Sky Italia. They say that PSG have offered 50 million euros plus 10 million euros in add-ons to Inter Milan for Mauro Icardi. Now that's a big deal there because for two reasons. Number one, if PSG do sign Icardi, it means that's another player next season that Inter are not going to have in their forward areas. They're not going to have Mertens, they're not going to have Icardi, but they didn't really want him anyway. The big part of this though is that they're going to have there a big transfer fee. They're going to have there a big amount of cash coming in and it just emphasises their point that they've been saying all along that they don't need to sell Lotaro. That's why they're going to hold out for his release clause. That's why they're going to hold out for a big, big deal. Because right now, with the money that's going to be coming in, they're going to sell Icardi. They don't need the money from Lotaro. And that could make things difficult for Barcelona. But if we do now move on to some player sales potentially of our own, because we have spoken considerably over the past few weeks about the financial situation that Barcelona currently find themselves in. And it's worth noting there that not only it's the current situation, which have brought about some real, real financial difficulties, but it's also general mismanagement there from the Barcelona board. It's not just the pandemic which have brought us into this situation. We've been going down this path now for quite a while. And according to Cat Radio, Barcelona need to do some business 
and need to do it quickly. Because over the next few weeks, Cat Radio say here in a big report that by June the 30th, which is technically the end of the football year in usual circumstances, they say that by June the 30th, Barca need to raise 70 million euros in player sales in order there to match the revenues that were budgeted by the club for player sales. And that's interesting there because usually these sort of things here where you need a certain amount of money by the end of the financial year in football, that is all regarding financial fair play. And quite clearly here, the club can only really spend what it earns, what it brings in there through revenue. You can only spend there a proportion of that on signings, on wages, things like that. And now the club are in a position whereby they need to sell players. We need to get some money in before June the 30th to abide by those FFP regulations. And that's why right now we need to see some departures, which brings us there nicely on to Mundo Deportivo's cover, which came yesterday. And that basically emphasised there Barcelona's problems. Look at that cover there. Look at the sheer amount of players that Barcelona will have on their books come the summer. MD there come out and say there's going to be 35 players in all. You've got the first team squad, you've got players as well from the youth teams, you've got players there returning from loan. The squad is overflowing. And of course the club's wage bill, which we've also spoken about, it's clear right now we need departures. And with that June the 30th date looming, they need to come now. Which then takes us under the cover of sport from yesterday because the man who is the leading candidate right now to be the first sale this coming summer, it is Todibo. Jean-Claire Todibo appears to be destined to lead the club after the board basically see him as a way to get that money in. They say there on the cover of sport that Todibo will be the first sale and the club are looking for 25 million euros for him. And if they receive an offer of that amount, which of course they will, they will be selling Todibo to the highest bidder. Now what they basically go on to say there is the club will be very happy to take the profit. We only signed him there for just 1 million euro back in January of 2019. And after a pretty short turnaround, the club here are looking to cash in on Tadebo. But that's a gamble. We said it all along. It may work out there that that happens and you actually take the profit and it's a good deal. Somebody there like Yeri Mina, I would say, yeah, well done. You took the profit. It was a good deal. It was good business. But the problem with Tadebo is if he goes out there now next few years, he shows some quality, he improves. 25 million euros is going to look like nothing. That's going to look like nothing for such an emerging centre-back. You're going to be quoted years down the line if Tadebo goes on there to fulfil his potential four times that. You're going to be looking 80 million, 100 million as the years go on. So right now, I can understand the club wanting some money in. But is Tadebo really the right player there to be going out, cashing in on? I'm not so sure. There are other options, of course, though. Another player who has been linked with an exit is Arturo Vidal, who actually celebrates his 33rd birthday today. So happy birthday to Arturo. And he is somebody there who's certainly been linked with an exit from Barcelona, along with Rakitic, certainly now over the past few transfer windows. Him and Ivan have very much been linked with the exit door, and in particular, a move there to Syria with Inter being strongly linked this summer, along with also back in the January transfer window. But it was interesting yesterday to hear Arturo Vidal speaking on Instagram Live for the first time about his future at Barcelona. He actually said, I'm very happy here and I'm comfortable in Barcelona right now. Of course, I want to continue here. Right now, I'm more prepared than ever. Physically, I feel better than ever. I'm happy here. It's a good group of players and I've got friends in the locker room. Which again is another indication that a player who is aging, who is certainly still on the contract that he's been given at Barcelona, it may not be all that easy to get rid of Vidal this summer if that's what the club aim to do. Another player as well who looks unlikely to depart this summer is Neto because even though our number two goalkeeper has been linked very much so with a move away from the club over the past few weeks despite not having even been here yet for one single season after signing from Valencia just last summer and there have even been a few rumours in the press that he could go back to Valencia this summer because incredibly Jasper Sillison is going to be on the transfer list so certainly there a little bit of uncertainty but MD came out yesterday to say that basically Neto had already informed the club he's not leaving. He has no intention of leaving the club. He also was given a contract there until 2023 when he signed, so it looks unlikely the Brazilian will be leaving the club this summer, which again may be another one 
You can cross off the list. But last and certainly not least, guys, Neto is not going to be the only goalkeeper potentially staying at Barcelona because we move on now, finishing with some real positive news Ter Stegen, because there have been doubts certainly over the past few weeks surrounding Ter Stegen's contract renewal. There has been initially a little bit of talk that during the pandemic things were not really progressing as Barcelona hoped. There was even talks there that the overall deal had been put on complete hold. And they were seriously concerned because you look at it right now, Ter Stegen's current contract expires in 2022, which when you think about it in football terms, it's not all that far away. Because if you don't get anything agreed there by next summer, not this summer coming, but the summer of 2021, suddenly then, you're in a position where he'd be entering the final year of his deal, and that's a dangerous situation. That is something there the club would desperately need to avoid. And sports cover this morning, though, give us some much-needed positivity because they suggest Barcelona have made a big breakthrough when it comes to Stegen because that headline there reads unblocked. And basically what they go on to say there is that talks with Ter Stegen over that new deal, they have resumed again. They have begun again, and in particular, they have now made some progress in renewing that deal for Ter Stegen, with the club aiming there to renew him until June 2025. Complete there, of course, with a big pay rise for Ter Stegen. We've spoken in detail about his wages before. He is earning well, well below what he's been earning in terms of his importance to the Barcelona first team. But I just wanted to leave you there with that big news, that encouraging news. Ter Stegen is a vital part of any Barcelona project. He has to stay, and things now looking much better. But please leave your thoughts in the comments down below, guys, on everything we have discussed in today's video. Of course, from that training, what do you think there about the sessions? Do you feel as though there is more variety, more fun, more smiles on the faces among the Barcelona players? And in particular there, what do you make of the player sales situation? Who do you see as somebody who may be there, should be out of the exit door, somebody who could bring in some money for the club at this time? Let me know all of those thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, your thoughts on Ter Stegen and that potential renewal, which could be moving closer. I will see you soon, of course. Plenty more to come. Thanks for your support. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Barca. Oh.